All right. You got it. Father John. Well. Welcome uh, us with a prayer, please. Thank sure. you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. O heavenly King, comfort to the spirit of truth, who art in all places and fill us all things. Treasury of good things and giver of life, come and dwell in us and cleanse us from every stain and save our souls, O gracious Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, good morning, good afternoon, depending on where you are uh, in this world. Um, welcome to our session uh, on the Luxa, the glory, and both now of the Dormition Feast from the Vesper service after, O Lord, I have cried. It's a pleasure to have Christopher Halwe and Shadi uh, also uh, with me on this. Uh, uh, also, we have a uh, an unsung soldier to an uh, unsung hero, Charlie, uh, who's uh, God bless him. He's doing uh, his own session now, but the four of us basically are the ones who um, uh, do the work behind the scene for the Byzantine stuff that you might see on the website and uh, um, on the liturgical guide. Um, uh, it is, again, I, uh, it's a great pleasure to have them with me helping. And um, actually, I would rather, I would, uh, I would, like, I just, I won't be, I would, I don't want to be with anybody else working except with these three people. I don't know how that would be the, the right uh, uh, but the point is just like, it's been always a pleasure. Uh, and I talk to them sometimes and I'm pretty sure we talk to each other more than we talk to probably our, you know, family, um, uh, members, uh, which is, uh, they are family now, at least for me. Anyway, we're not going to just like have speeches today. Um, the point of uh, this session, we're going to, um, dissect the Doxa Stikon. It's one of the most complicated, uh, glories, if I can say. Um, uh, I will touch upon the Byzantine uh, notation things. Uh, why is it written in this, uh, the way it's written in Byzantine? What are these like uh, um, uh, symbols and stuff like this? Uh, Shadi, God bless him, he's going to chant each part of us. We hear it from the, the voice of its own composer, uh, Shadi. And then uh, Chris, uh, he will be our... Um, Western music guy on this, why it's written the same, you know, how it was, uh, um, uh, why it's written in Western the, the way it's written. And he'll uh, answer the questions. Basically, he's the translator from the Byzantine to the Western. Um, first, before we, we um, uh, you know, go through the, its details, I'm just going to speak a little bit about it. I know this session we've done, we we've done it um, between in last year. I don't remember exactly. I think it's maybe the first or the second week of uh, August after the SMI. Between the SMI and the Feast of Dormition, we had that session, um, and in it, I spoke a little bit about it, about its history or what we know about this uh, hymn. Actually, we don't know much about it, uh, or there are a lot of assumptions, but we don't know for sure, um, let's say, who wrote it. We don't know exactly who wrote it. The tradition of the church uh, claim, uh, uh, according to the tra tradition, we think that St. John of Damascus who wrote it. And uh, uh, so maybe it's like a, a ninth uh, century hymn. Um, why do we think he wrote it? Um, all, we know that he had he wrote a lot of hymns in the church, especially for major feasts. We know that for sure, especially the major feast of Christ and the Theotokos. We also uh, know that he had a special uh, relationship, if I can say, with the Theotokos. He loved the Theotokos. She was part of like we. Uh, um, he wrote a lot about her, and uh, it was a big part of his life. Um, what we know for sure uh, uh, that. As you know, we chant. It's the the uh, interesting thing about this glory is it's, uh, it is that it goes through all eight tones. It is called, you know, the the glory in tone one, and we'll see that the beginning of it and the ending of it is in tone one, but in between it goes through the other seven tones. And uh, but what we know for sure, if that's how it was composed, like the way we have it now, going through all eight tones. That means that initially when was it was written a thousand years ago, 1200 years ago, 1100 years ago, um, it is written with the same concept going through all eight tones. Uh, that does not mean 
that it sounds exactly how it sounds now. Just because music is art, art evolves and changes. So the way we now know, uh, you know, the, uh, how tone one might sound or tone two sounds for us now does not mean that it ha that's how it sounded 500 years ago, nor that's how it sounded a thousand years ago. But we know the concept is that if it's written all these eight modes like this, uh, you know, going through all the eight modes, that means initially when it was written, and as you know, uh, up to, I think, if I'm not mistaken, until the 14th, 15th century, uh, before that, whoever wrote a hymn, wrote the text of it for a hymn, actually he or she also wrote the music. So it wasn't like now that we have the text and we might have multiple composers composing. That basically is something started showing up like 15th, 16th century. Uh, but before that, uh, like the hymn of Cassiani, we, we know a lot of hymns that we can <coughs> We at least one of the major hymns, the hymn of Cassiani, we believe that Cassiani, the nun, not only wrote the text, but composed music for it because that's how it was back in these uh, days. Um, anything else I wanted to add? No, not like through its history at least. Uh, okay, let me share my screen and then we can start. The beautiful thing and you know, how Chris and Charlie did it, we, you'll see how we um, divided the music. Um, share. Can everybody see the screen? Uh, basically, the, uh, PDF. Yeah, we, we don't see any music. We see your um, uh, settings. I see. Well, forgive me. <clears throat> Just one second. Okay, how about this? Share the right screen. Yes, that's probably what I should do. Uh, <laughs> Shared Chris. Although I'm trying to, I'm sharing the screen that I'm, okay, let's put it this way. Uh, let's do this and then let's do this. Sorry, give me one second. I thought I, I oh, here we go. How about now? There you go. Good. Make it a little bit larger. Um, just get a bigger computer. I'm just kidding. How about this? I just, because I still want to show the Byzantine. There you go. There you go. The Byzantine and the Western. I'm just going to make it a little bit smaller, if you don't mind. So at least we can uh, still see everything. Okay. Um, like I said, although it goes through all the eight tones, it is still identified as a hymn in tone one. Um, uh, in Byzantine, if you see, do you see my uh, also uh, the uh, the pen? It says first mode, and in Greek, that's basically how it, uh, hymns are usually identified. Ichos, a tone, basically from pa from the first step, tone, uh, the first uh, pitch, basically uh, tone one. Um, always, always, anytime you sing any kind of hymn, regardless if it's uh, short, long, complicated, not complicated, one of the best ways to, uh, one of the first thing that you need to do is you skim through it. Of course, you need to read music. If you read music very well, it's still, even if you can't read things right on the spot, beautiful. But like, it's good always to skim, skim through it to know one important thing, how high it goes and how low it goes. And the reason for this is so at least, you know, in Byzantine, you know, every, all the notes are relatives, but also uh, it's uh, it just, everybody's singing the one line, you know, same line. It's not like, well, I'll, I'll do bass or I'll do alto or I'll do soprano if I can't do the other. Um, so it's very important to know how high or how low the hymn goes, so you can adjust the pitch that you're gonna start on, your bass note, okay? In this glory, in this doxasticon, we notice that it goes very low. So traditionally, it's basically pitched two or three steps above the natural uh, in the Byzantine terms. Chris, I don't know, uh, if that, uh, you know if that's the right translation or it's uh, it, it can apply the same thing for the Western. 
Yes, um, what he's saying is sometimes, like you'll see the Western, uh, we usually tend to write tone one uh, in the key uh, on, a, um, on a bass tonic note of D. So it's based off of D, that's the, uh, the E zone, the tonic. Um, but sometimes, you know, when you write something in Western, you have absolute notes. You don't have to sing those. That's some things that we would meant, I'm going to mention later too. Now, you don't have to always sing it as a D. If that, if you realize that you look, what he's saying is if you look through the piece of music and you see that, wow, this goes up to a high E or F, that's too high for me. So if you wouldn't want to start it right at a D. And what he said earlier is this is relative to, you can bring it down. You can still write it as a D, but you don't have to sing it as a D. You can bring it down to maybe a C or B natural or B flat, wherever your comfortable range is, so that you know how high you have to do. And that's what I do in church. If I'm looking at a piece and I see where it goes up to, I'll try to hit that high note where it's comfortable, and then I'll bring down and see where I need to start. That's what he's saying. Okay, so uh, Shadi will, will, uh, will tell us more about this, and we'll see how he sings it. Um, it is in a sticky erotic style, if you notice. Uh, and what does that mean, sticky erotic style? As most of you uh, or all of you should know, uh, it's when it's more of an embellished mem uh, melodies and each syllable uh, kind of gets um, at least the accented words or the, the accented syllables get uh, more than one, uh, uh, mu uh, one uh, music note. Uh, in the glory, both now it doesn't show very much, but we will see this when we start with the um, with the melody. Um, that being said, um, Shadi, you want to sing for us glory both now, and you can tell us which pitch you want to start on and how are you going to pitch it? Okay, sure. So based on what uh, Father John and Chris said, um, I'm gonna. I usually pitch it on G or Z. Uh, but today I'm gonna pitch it on F. Um, and that being said, some you know maybe some of the ladies they might be able to like sing it naturally, you know, or like uh, on a D. You know, some people they might like some people like us. We have to like pitch it a little bit higher. No. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever. To the ages of ages. Amen. Bravo. And as you saw, uh, there's here, if you see on, uh, on the screen, that says various ways to chant. And uh, Shadi did not just sing this melody just like in a way dry, if I can say what, as it's written. So he didn't go like, Glory to the Father and the two, although that's how it's written, but in Byzantine, we have what's called the oral tradition is basically considered as an accent. We have in the English language, we have different accents. If you are from Texas, there's a certain way you pronounce words. If you're from the Northeast, there are certain ways that you pronounce words. So there are different ways of interpreting, you know, sometimes uh, uh, notations the way they so anytime you'll see this kind of like a, in tone one f g f there are few ways that they're acceptable that you can actually chant them so mm, glory to the father that's one way la 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 or another way glory to the father and to and those are like basically what gives the the, the the taste of Byzantine. You tell me, well, how do we learn this? Is there a book that we open it and we just like, here's what it is? No. Although we tried a few times, actually, when one of the, actually, my first SMI, uh, Charlie asked me to, to teach a class on this. But it's basically, it's the same way how you learn your, you know, English. 
your own language and then you develop these accents because that's how you heard it from your parents you don't go to you know you never taken a class at school you know called you know accents in the english language uh so here's uh, the texan you know here's your uh, one hour we're gonna go through today through the texan uh, uh uh accent or like the bostonian accent today we're going to learn the differences no it just it's if you know you get affected by this though you know living around you know and listening to more of these you know these accents anyway let's go to the uh, you know to the um serious business now so the first part of it verily the god mentaled apostles were caught up on all sides ascending the clouds by a divine sign and this is in tone one this is all basically just a regular sticky erotic nothing that we need to really um, think about or like uh, uh, discuss. Um, well, John. Yes, sir. Is there any embellishment that you would put on the word "to" on glory to glory to the Father? Is that what you're saying, Yolanda? Glory to the Father and to the Son. Oh, um, I won't put I won't put uh, embellishment on "to" just because it's not actually no, the next Maybe. two on and to the Son. Glory to the Father and to the yeah. Son. Yes. Yeah. And again, there are, you know, again, it's just, um, right. yes, you embellish them. Even like sometimes you do want to embellish definitely more the accented words. But it, what what, uh, what we have, we embellish things the, like the way the sequence of notes. So regardless in the end, the, the sequence of these three notes like this, we embellish them in a certain way. Two, exactly look how we embellished it. Although in Byzantine, it's written just um, a full note, two beats. Um, so Shadi and Father John, tell me if I'm wrong, but what I've seen in most cases on these things, Byzantines don't like to sit still on a note very too long, you know, just to hold. You have to give a little bit inflection, embellishment, like yeah. on that word too. Exactly. I mean, there's no way in Byzantine, you're going to look at it like this. Again, with the English language, no one reads glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever. It was just like it. There's accentations. There is just like emphasis on things and it, it applies for the notations itself. OK, mm -hmm. actually, that's probably will be good to have at some point uh, in the next SMI or some session that we kind of try to develop, like codify these things and like talk more about, you know, these embellishments. Um, so the first tone, um, Shadi, would you like to sing it, please? Yes. So uh, like, for example, verily, uh, I don't stay two, two beats on V. For example, you can, you can st start like this, verily, or verily, the God mentored apostles were caught up on all sides, ascending the clouds by a um that was tone one chris uh, anything about uh, the western in tone one no uh, um yeah so far with uh, what we've done here you're following the straight pitches uh, there's no transpositions yet um you can tell if you're watching the western if you don't know how to read the byzantine you can see that shaddy put a lot of inflections and embellishments in various places Sometimes in the in the in the in the Western, I try to put uh, try to stay somewhat standard. If you see the symbol, let's see, I don't see a um, potassium up there. Um, if you see a certain symbol, sometimes I'll put I'll make it like two eighth notes and a quarter. If it's two beats, it'll be two eighth notes and a quarter. If you see the symbols on apostle. Uh, you could do a different way. It doesn't have to be two um, uh, eighth notes and a quarter. You can put it, if you see in the Western, right. You can see it's like an F with a grace note. Uh, you don't have to do a bum, 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 bum. You could do a bum, ba, dum, bum, ba, dum, bum. You could do something like that. Like he said, there's various ways. 
So mm-hmm. it's hard to do that in Western because it's more absolute when you write something. Uh, Byzantine, you have more freedom, I guess, for however you write it, uh, however the chanter would like to chant it. But there's many ways I could have written some of these things, but sure. we're trying to stay somewhat standard. So the mm-hmm. Byzantine people singing it, if you're chanting Byzantine, what I mean, you, you, you can even change how it's written, how I have it written there, you know, if you wanted to. Well, in the end, again, even in Byzantine, it's written a certain way. You don't write exactly every movement in the voice. Right. But like there are melodies that you, it, although it's written in a certain way, you can interpret it in few acceptable ways. It's not like you can make your own thing. It's not like the Holy Spirit just hit me with a new right. melody and now I can just do it, do whatever comes out with me. No, it's just there are like it's like in a circle and you have like options inside of the circle. Particular options, right? Mm-hmm. So now we get to, so this, the first part ends on pa, as we see, or in Western, of course, on D, right? And then when we get to the second part here, um, it says plagal first mode. Um, In the hymn itself, you don't see like, oh, uh, it just, you don't see like, oh, here's, let's uh, make a break, like a kind of break it up and then let's write in tone five or plagal first. But here we did it just so we can, um, you know, tell people about it uh, and be like more obvious. But now I'm just going to talk about the Byzantine and Chris will jump to the Western. Um, it, it ends on pa, right? That's the martyria of pa. And then we see here in Eson. So if I'm saying a parallel, if I'm saying it solfege, so it's like, pum, is that, I don't know, I don't remember the pitch, but like something like this, pum, pa, 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 vu, pa, ni, ni, zo, ni, pa, ni, pa. That's how would, I would have sung it. But there is this thing. There is this this symbol here that looks like this forgive like and then like this this symbol it's called aftora aftora basically it's the word in greek for corruption and what does that mean is now there are symbols used in byzantine notations to to take you from one scale to another scale to take you from one mood to another mood if i can say so this this here that you see, this is the phthora, but I'm talking now just specifically Byzantine, you know, um, that will actually be a great class to join in with uh, Dr. Uh, Jessica. Uh, if you're only, you know, if you know Western very well, but you don't know the Byzantine very well, that's a great, actually last year she did a fantastic class on phthores, on those uh, notes, and she's gonna do one, um, uh, I don't know if it's today or tomorrow. Uh, the point is, for people who know already this in Byzantine, this is a thora of pa in the diatonic scale. A thora of pa in the diatonic scale. Uh, um, uh, forgive me. Hey. Thora of k. Um, uh, the thora of k in the, in the diatonic scale. So what does that mean? So if I finished here, the pa vu pa pa. Okay. Technically, if I didn't have that thora, I should have thought pa, 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 pa. But now, because this thora tells me I have to use a ke, 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 ke. Okay? So now I'm transposing everything down basically four steps or a fifth down. So ke, that's the new. So what would be the new pa? Ke, the ravo pa. So ke, 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 zo, ke, the, the ra. Okay, and that's now everything kind of like a broad down, uh, four steps down or a fifth down. We did not change scale. We still, tone one and tone five, they're still on the same scale. They use the same scale, the diatonic scale. But what happened here is we're transposing um, the same scale, but from one pitch, four uh, uh, pitches down. And if you notice, look at the martyria, look at the key. Uh, Usually a pa looks like this, if you're familiar with the Byzantine notation, right? But this key, if you look, there are two dots under it. So hmm, it's not a pa, but also it's it's just it's a mix, if I can say. Try to delete. Okay. 
So, you know, like I said, this is uh, um, it used to before the, the before the Torah. It is what it is. Pa, right? If I didn't have the Torah, I would have done pa 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 vo pa ni ni zo ni pa ni pa. Okay. But if I because of the Torah now I have to use solfege, you know, using the parallel, I have to say k. It's basically now it's a tone five done like low basically. Um, that's k. So k k k k zo k z. I should put the Byzantine like this too. K k k k zo k z z ra z k z k. So the new martyria should be k. So how is a, a, the martyria of uh, of k looks like? It's basically like this and like this, right? And the martyria of pa, it's like this, like this. So this one, the pa is the original one. K is the new one, if I can say, the new uh, um, uh, uh, martyria because of the transposition. So what do we see? We see that we used the upper part of the original pitch with the lower part of the new pitch. And that's why we have this key. This is a mix. This one, when I look at this, that tells me that this is a K transposed on a pa. That's a K transposed on a ka, on a, on a pa. So if the if the pa becomes K, okay, the pa becomes K. What do you think this note is? What do you think this uh, this uh, martyria, this symbol is? We have it like this, a V, two dots, and then... So if the, 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 the pa becomes K, okay? So if I want to continue, zo, K, Z, K, zo, K, zo, ni, zo, K, K, Z. So now, but originally what it was, what is it originally? If this is originally was a pa, vu, pa, ni, pa, vu, pa, vu, ra, vu, pa, pa, ni. So if the k becomes a pa, the z or the pa becomes k, the ni becomes a z. So the z, that's the symbol of the in the diatonic scale, right? And the 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 um, symbol of ni in the diatonic scale. See, so I take the original upper part, which is this one, with the new lower part of the, and that's what I have here. Okay, but also we know how do we know also it's kind of it's tone five. Those melodies used this this melody, and they came upon uh, they came up up to the most pure. Um, uh, this is a typical. This is a like um, this is a typical tone five uh, melody. So Shadi, you wanna sing this for us, please, and then um, um, Chris can talk about. Mm -hmm. Okay. And they came up to thy most pure life originating resting place to kiss it reverently. Okay, so now we're in the sticky erotic tone five, basically. And so all these melodies, they're melodies key or a melody signature, if I can say, of tone five. Those are this melody is like the fact that it goes la 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 la. That's like a a a word, if I can say, in the lexicon of tone five. This kind of melody series, like uh, the way the melody it is like this, you don't see it in tone two, let's say. You don't see it in tone four. You just see it in tone five and sometimes in tone one, but it's more it's for tone five. Okay. Okay. Uh, Chris, how about this? Yeah. I'm so going to see my... if I can share my screen okay. here now. Let me stop mine and then I can go back and um, I stop mine. Okay. So now what happened to all my people? We still see you. You still see me? Yes. 
Oh, there you are. Okay. All right. So when I first learned Byzantine chant way back in the uh, early 80s when I was at seminary, we d I didn't even know about Thora or Martaria. We never learned any of that because we didn't know, we weren't looking at Byzantine notation. We were looking only at Western. Didn't even know anything about transpositions until I, you know, several years ago when I started doing all of this typesetting for Shaddy and Father John, and I'm learning more, and I've learned tons and tons, and I'm still learning tons and tons. You know, um, it never ends. When I started transposing or, or typesetting Shaddy's music, basically, and, and I would see all these thought of, I would get very confused. Well, what do you mean you're going down a fourth or up a fifth? or how, I don't understand. Why, why can't you just keep writing the way you're writing? Well, going through all the explanations and Shaddy, God bless him and Father John for putting up with all of my many questions. I basically came to understand this and I hope that I can explain it properly so you all can not be saying, what? Um, it goes like this. If you see at the last part here, it ends, it ends on pa here, okay? Um, what that does, it, you, now when you go to the next part, you're coming here, you're going to start, you, like he said, you're going to think you're starting on pa, but this symbol tells you that you're gonna, it's going to become a K. So basically, you're not going to change pitch, you're going to stay on that D. However, you're going to sing it as if it were a, a, an A. You're transposing it in your mind. And that's kind of how I've had to do it. When I'm, when I'm singing something in Byzantine, and I've studied it many times before so I don't get thrown by it and have to think about it, when you're looking at it in Byzantine and you see a thora, and you say, okay, now it's the thora of K, but I'm on, a, I'm on the D, but I'm going to think of it as if it were... I'm transposing it down in my mind as if it were an A. So the first part here that you see in Western, this is how we would continue to write it. And that's why we've tried to give you some kind of an explanation. Now it's plagal first mode, which is tone five, transposed down a fifth. What that means is you were already on the D, but now they want you to think of it as if you're on an A but you're still going to write it as a D. That's transposed down a fifth. Okay, you're not going to take it up a fifth to the A. You're going to keep it on the D, but you're going to sing it as if it were an A. So we keep writing it as it's a D. So you've got, And they came up to thy most pure life originating resting place. To kiss it reverently. When they came up. Now, if you didn't leave it the way it was, if you brought it up to an A, you might be more familiar. It would typically look like the bottom part there in tone five. That you might say, oh, okay, that's what I did. And I looked at that and I said, oh, that's okay. Now I get it. It's as if it were an A, but I'm singing it down on the D. I'm trying to transpose that in my mind, singing the D as if it were an A. So if you were an A on the second part there in the bottom, and if you just keep the same pitch, mm -hmm. it's not technically an A. That's why I mean it's relative. Now you keep it there. And they came up to the B flat to thy most pure life originating resting place. And that's what they do in this particular diatonic for tone, um, tone five. When you're going up on that, and that's a zo, the B. When you go up on the on the B, it's natural. When you come down, uh, it's a flat. And if you were going to stay on the B and kind of hovering around, you would still keep it the B natural until you were finally come down. And that's very hard to do. If you're if you're just reading the Byzantine, you have to really know what you're chanting and know how to read this so that you can tell where it's going to be finally changing so you can make it the flat and not a not um, not a natural. Rusty. And that's another way you could uh, embellish a little bit. You wouldn't simply sing life, life originating, resting place. You give it a little bit. Um, life originating, rest. Or there's 
resting place. Anytime you see that, um, where you see that uh, right here, this kind of a change with a, uh, an, uh, an eson and an apostrophos, you, you can, you're allowed to do like a da da dum, resting place. Give it a little embellishment to kiss it reverently. So that's kind of how we're going to look at the rest of this too. And I'll, I'll try to help explain that as well, um, how this transposition works, okay? We're trying to keep it on the same pitch where you ended up so you're not just jumping around when you're watching it in Western. you got to sing a D, now sing an A. No, you're singing on the same notes that you left it on, except now you're transposing it as if it were the other note of whatever they wanted you to take it to. In this case, then A, you're singing it as if it were the A and, and thinking of it um, as you're singing it as a D. Okay, so Father John, go you back. Too. Sure. I hope that makes sense. Does anybody have any questions? Does that make sense? Hopefully. Thumbs up, maybe? Yeah, that's really helpful. Okay. Yeah. Right. But, we'll, we'll, um, see, we'll see more of that as he goes. Now we get into the second mode, and we're going to see more of that. Yeah. So, we um, have about um, 20 minutes. So. Yes. So, yeah, or, yeah uh, Yolanda? Yeah, so, so with the... So you talk about the flat and the natural. Can you talk about the, the, the difficulty, how accurate it is to, to transpose the attraction in the, in the Western notation? You know how in Byzantine music, you have the attraction with the different, um, mm. you know, with the different scale, if you will. So you you're really not capturing the the some of the microtones, right? The right. the changes. Yeah, we've often talked about that when I'm writing and transposing it into Western. Um, and Shady would say, "Well, you know, there's a microtone, and okay, well, the best that I can do in Western writing is this. We'll try to make it a sharp or a natural or something, um, you know. And even like I said, when when on that uh, resting place." Um, if you were, if that, if that particular note sec selection was more hovering on the, what I think you're talking about the attractions, if it was hovering around, um, well, on the bottom section, um, Father John, move that up just a little bit, please. If you, no, no, down at the bottom of the other page. Yeah, up just a little bit. Okay. Um. If you see on resting place, you see the B natural, C, B flat, and A on resting. Um, if you are hovering around that B natural to C and a B natural, C, B natural, but then you came down to the A and went up to back to the B, you wouldn't really make it at a full A. I mean, correct me guys if I'm wrong, but I think you would probably keep it more closer to the A sharp in mm -hmm. what we would say is Western. Da, 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 da. And then when you're finally coming down, then you would make it the B flat. Da, 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 Then you would change it. So yeah, that attraction would affect that A in that particular spot. You wouldn't go fully down, maybe just an A sharp or something close to Will that. be an A sharp. But, but, the but, this is, but this is in tone four I, this is not in tone five. You are meaning okay. not in this tone five. So if you were hovering, you wouldn't necessarily do an A sharp on that. Not in tone five. Okay. Yeah. Um, right. And and that's why I mean the sky is limited on the well not sky is limited but like there's so much to talk about this that would take us you know hours of this, uh, but also keep in mind that you know yes especially in our archdiocese we've been used to Byzantine chant, basically from Western notation, but it's not the alphabet. Western notation is not the alphabet of Byzantine chant. The alphabet of Byzantine chant is Byzantine notation, the notations that we've seen before. So a lot of times we, we can't, you know, not everything can be translated like in languages, not every single thing that can be translated. And it's sometimes it's hard to like, what to use, you have to make up signs. You know, if you're familiar with the Capella Romana group or other groups, you know, who's like they have in their, uh, um, their singers are mixed up, you know, their chain is Byzantine and Western. They have to create in a way their own alphabet, own signs and stuff to like explain things like this. 
uh, just because in Byzantine, it, you know, in Western, or generally it doesn't exist, like how to, you know, write those sharps and, and uh, uh, flats. In Byzantine, we have symbols for all of this in a way. But then again, every tone, every style in every tone has uh, specific rules and stuff. And that's why one of the things that we've been trying to do the last few years, not to tell people like, in the end, we're trying to say that Byzantine is way more more expand than what it was being, you know, how it's been used for the last maybe 30, 40 years in Arash Diocese. That it's actually, there's a lot of, I mean, the same way you have complex, complicated Western music thing, it's basically the same with Byzantine. It's not just like go on the chain stand and make up a couple melodies. Here's your beginning note, here's your ending note, and just make up the uh, make up the rest of it. And then at the end of the day, I'm an accomplished chanter. I'm a famous, you know, very good famous chanter, you know. That there's so much in this, so there's so much work. But in, in here, um, in this session at least, we're trying to at least show, if you see on the screen, all these like uh, different changes uh, from the tones. All right, um, go ahead, go ahead. Okay. Second mode and yeah. Second mode. So we finished it in tone five. Ta, um, ta -ra -ra to kiss it reverently. So this. This mel this uh, martyria here, this symbol, is a new pa, but it's actually because everything was brought down four steps or fifth. So from pa, if we take down four steps, that's a low the. Okay, so so pa, and that's the symbol why it looks like this. That's a the, uh, and originally the, and then pa the new the new uh, um, uh, the new pitch. So when we did parallel. So pa, and then we're going up here. This symbol in Byzantine tells me to go up four steps. Pa right? Pa the fifth. But what do I see? I see this kind of like sword thing, like this, and I see this. That's another thora. And it's actually a thora for the soft chromatic scale. Uh, soft uh, chromatic scale, that means the scale that tone two follows. That's the soft chromatic scale thora, but for specific notes. And uh, this thora is for the ni, the vu, the the, and the zo in the, dieta, in the soft chromatic scale. But what does the composer do here? He puts a delta for us here. What does that mean? He's saying, oh, I want you to go now soft chromatic, switch to soft chromatic, but I want you to start now because this symbol is general for the ni, vu, the, and zo in the, in the soft chromatic, but I want you to use it as a the. So, right, that's what I ended. And then I have to go up plus four. But on this K, he's telling me, oh, here's your uh, soft chromatic note, Thora. Uh, uh, so K, V, I need to make now the make it the, And then apply the soft chromatic rules on all the lines after this, which means in the, in the soft chromatic uh, scale, the A is usually, it is always flat. So the... Okay. Okay, so did you notice this whole switch of mood? So we were singing basically, to kiss it reverently. Uh, as for the most sublime Heavenly powers, they came with their own 
Okay. Chris? Anything? You want to yes. share, right? I'll, I'll stop mine. Oops. <laughs> you got out of it and I hit the wrong thing. <laughs> oh, it's a high. Okay. All right. So again, it's the same kind of concept. Now you, since you've got this soft chromatic of Thora here now, and you're telling, they're telling us that it's going to be a V. What we finished on um, was basically the G, which was a pa, or which was a, we're thinking of it as a, um, as transposed up a fifth, but you're still on the low G. So you're going to continue to write it from the low G. Okay. So if you're going up a fifth, you're going up a fifth from the low G, up a fifth is to a D. Now, you're going to write it as a D, but you're going to think of it as if you're now on the V, on the G, because now you're in the, in the soft chromatic scale for tone two. And I'll share with you, I, I was listening to the one that uh, these guys all did with Charlie uh, last, uh, I think it was in the, or last year actually, in August. Um, that he said that one of the fathers, a priest from Holy Cross, was telling him that tone two is the is the, is the tone that the angels sing in. I'd love to hear that because when when Gabriel came down and gave the monk the uh, the rest of the more honorable and he gave him uh, the uh, it is truly meet, it was in tone two. So, all right. So now you're thinking tone two. You're ending on the on the low G. You're going up a fifth. You're going to write it. We're going to write it as a D. However, we're going to think of it in our minds as a G in the in the soft chromatic scale. So you're still writing it like this. As for the most sublime heavenly powers they came with their own chief <clears throat> okay um, now that's how you would see it written however as I'm singing it I'm maybe looking at those notes but if I were in the Byzantine notation I would still be on that same D of a pitch or closer wherever I was in, in our scale relative, but I'm thinking of it as if I were singing it on a G, starting on the G, because that's the soft chromatic and what he told us up here with that symbol, uh, he wanted it as a V, as a G. As for the most sublime, okay, so you're just singing it that way. That makes more sense to me because that's how it typically would look in a tone two, as a tone two. Um, but nonetheless, even though the above, the first one here is the tone two, it's written on a different scale down because we're following what we've been chanting from before. So, and I think if I heard Shadi sing this correctly at the very end here, mm -hmm. uh, on the word there, because this, maybe that's the law of attraction, Shadi, you sang it more as a D sharp, um, didn't go down all the way. Uh, am I getting that correct this time? Yes. Yes. So in, in tone two, in tone two, the soft chromatic. Well, as a general so this rule. This is rav. In this uh, case, this is ravu. Ravu. So there's no attraction. There. there is the the, the yep. last one. Just this one here. The there. The the, the last note of there. Whoops. Yes, right here. So in Byzantine, that's a general. So here's the general rule in Byzantine. In Byzantine, there are rules, but there are more exceptions to the rules than there are rules. So <laughs> in the soft chromatic, yes, soft chromatic in general, A is flat, a B is a D is flat, D pa is flat, A uh, K is flat. But uh, there are exceptions. The exceptions is because of the laws of attraction. Anytime the melody is coming down to D. And does not go beyond D, below D. The D is not actually flat. Not only this, so if the melody we have F, E, D, E, F, we just like passing by the D and going back up. The D not only is not flat, 
uh, uh, that, you know, uh, um, uh, the D is not only flat, not even natural, it's actually sharp in a way. So, with their own cheek. All right, just so you're understanding those who uh, see the, the Western. So you're seeing the Western, just so you understand. When you when you may see me write these things in in uh, the Western notation, second mode, transpose down to fourth. You know, I've had people call me and or write me emails. What does that mean? You know, so I try to explain it to them. That's what we're explaining here, why we say that. It's not really necessary in the Western if I write it. I could just write the Western and you wouldn't know one way or the other. It's just that's the way it's written. Um, however, because it's written that way, it's already understood that way when they write the Torah in uh, the Byzantine, I try to give people a little better understanding of, of why it might be written the way it is, because if they look at that as a regular tone two, they're going to say, well, why is he writing tone two on a D? That doesn't even make sense. So that's why. Continuing. You know, in the end, I mean, I hope in the end, it's not like we can learn all of this in one hour. You know, it took me it took me years to learn, you know, this hymn itself, you know, and while I'm like in school just for Byzantine chair. But the main point when we do stuff like this, not like to discourage you, but it, at least to have you like think about like there's so much to learn and hopefully you're open to learn more and more about this uh, tradition. Uh, continuing. So after we finish tone two, they came with their own chief. In Byzantine, this is the new vu. It's a vu. Vu ravi ke di ke zoni zo ke di ravu vu. But then, what we have here is going up one step. Vu ram. No, that's my new note now. But what do I see on top? I see on top this thing like this, like this, like this. This, it's a Torah in the heart chromatic scale. That's what tone six follows. Tone six follows the heart chromatic scale. And this Torah is a general one for the pa, um, for the ni, vu, vi, and zo of heart chromatic scale. So that's why the composer, what does he do here? He puts a delta, a D, to tell us it's a V. Can consider it as a V. So, they came with their vu ra ra vu vu. Then I'm going up one ra, but now the ra has to become the the ra vu pa pa vu ra di ke zo ni pa ni zo ke di ra vu pa di 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 ke di ra vu pa vu ra di ra di. And if you remember, this is the low pa here. I'm sorry, the low V. And we actually cover, cut it in two. Uh, just so we can, uh, you know, just a long part of the, uh, you know, long section. We wanted to make sure. So here we saw that the transposition, basically now the switch to uh, from the soft chromatic scale to the hard chromatic scale. Uh, you want to sing it for us? To escort in in Thine all honor, God, receiving body. They went before in a super earthly Okay, Chris? Yes, um, so this was probably one of the hardest parts that I had to get used to when you're just changing it by one note. You're, you're thinking it's, um, uh, go back up a little, I'll just let you keep here. Uh, you, you want me to, to stop and you share? It's up to you. All right, go ahead. Um, all right, second, yeah, so 
when you're when you're coming off of um, the low B, um, which is the VU, uh, and now you're going up one. So you're going up from the B. Now you're going to write it as a C, but you're going to think of it as a G. Okay. <laughs> it, you get used to it after a while. You do. Um, trust me, you just have to do it over and over. Like he said, you know, you can't learn this stuff overnight. And it takes years and years. And I've we, been didn't, in we didn't learn it, you know. No, I, so that's right. So you're writing this as a C because that's where you left off on the D and you're going up the C. Um, so now, uh, but you, if you want to look at it on the second page, on the second part here, you can see how it would be, how it would typically look as if it were a tone six. Pumpa to escort and wrapped in awe. <clears throat> Thine all honored God receiving body. That to me is the tone six because it's written off of the D with the flat, the sharps and the flats that I'm used to. But this is we're still singing it. It's the same intervals, only it's written down, transposed down a fifth. Okay, instead of written on G, you're writing it on C. So that's that's the only difference. So that's what we have to get used to when you see these transpositions. Okay, we got about two or three minutes here. You want to finish the second last part up? We can do the other part too. Yeah, go ahead. We can do the other part. Although actually the most complicated one, I think, like you said, is the tone six one is the you know the most complicated. So um, um the so they went before uh, in parallel is and then here right because uh, in a hard chromatic scale the knee the high knee is always sharp stop cheering oh, oh you want me to keep it that's fine that's fine that's fine that's fine here we go here, da, 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 bingo. You guys see it? Yes. So shouting, it's in high knee. So high knee is sharp in the heart chromatic scale. So knees okay. I do I do want to make it a little bit smaller so uh, we can see both uh, notation. Kem. Zoni pavu pani zoni pani pa the zoni zoke the and here if you notice on behold there is a thora like this the first one that we learned it was like this see the difference one is you know going one way the other one is one way the other way this one the way we see it here, the one we see it here, that's the it goes with the flow. Uh, yes, this one is the phthora of the diatonic scale in the diatonic scale for specifically for the uh, for the V for the G. So now we have a switch in tone six. Actually, we have a switch to diatonic scale. So basically, like you know, uh, um, let's put it diatonic. We don't want to go through a lot of details. So. Um, pan di ke zoni pa di di zoni zo ke di ke zo zoni ni zo zo ke di ke di di ga. And then there's see here the thora, the, like this one. We're going back now to the the uh, the of hard chromatic. Ga di ke di ke di ga di. Uh, Shad, you want to sing it? Shouting invisibly to the Queen of all the divine maiden has come. 
Chris, I'm going to stop if you want to share or you want to continue with it, the next part. Um, one sec. Yes. Um, okay, go ahead. I'll get it. Here we go. I stopped. All right. So, yeah, the, just the last part here. Um, same thing. We, it's just the same thing as what we said from before. You're, we, we just split this part up in two pieces uh, so it would be easier to get on a page for each part. Um, first part, second part. So again, we're finishing. Uh, normally, you would see it continue here, uh, as on a D. On a, on a, I'm sorry, on a F sharp. But it would traditionally look like from the C sharp on a typical tone six. Like he said, the high knee is a, is sharp in uh, tone six. Um, so that's all. And we try to let you know where the diatonic changes come in here. Again, we put that there only because if you're writing something and people are used to singing it in like a tone six and they see it in tone six and all of a sudden you've got these flats uh, and different things, you're saying, well, that's not what happened there. So we try to let you know that it is a change. And then we're going back to the hard chromatic. And I'm surprised that I put hard chromatic at the bottom there. I don't remember doing that because usually we only put the changes from what it was in the beginning. If it's in a hard, if it's in a hard chromatic and it changes the diatonic, we would only put the brackets for changing diatonic and you would assume after that it goes back to the hard chromatic. But maybe because we were doing this as a teaching class that we put that in. Um, so yeah, that's um, basically all we've, I've tried to do here to help you understand the Western and the transpositions um, basically how I've had to learn it myself. Um, so I can think of it as if it were something else, but I'm keeping the same pitch, but thinking of it. And that's hard because then when you finish that part and you get the next thora to change you or bring you back, you have to now think it as the regular <laughs> and natural way that it was meant to be. So it's all, um, it's all pretty relative, I guess. So I hope it's helped. Now, we, what we're going to do is uh, we have a 15-minute break. Well, now we have about um, 11. 11 minutes. So we'll come back. Keep your things open. We're not going to – I don't think it's a different session. Uh, I think it's all one session. I think so. Yeah, so just keep your screens open, your connections there. Go stretch your legs, grab a bite, a drink or something, and come on back by quarter till, then we'll continue at quarter till. Thank you. Do you have any questions? I mean, people who don't want to – I mean – People don't yeah, want to we're take here. a break. We're here if anybody has a question. Okay. I would just say, uh, you know, I, I just saw this a chat about Byzantine schools and, you know, people wanted to learn more about it. Yes, we do have um, multiple schools around the country and we have wonderful teachers around the country, uh, you know, and some of them actually uh, help us in our, like at the Trisagion School with Amy and uh, Gabriel Cremins and uh, um, uh, Sam Heron. Of course, uh, John Michael Boyer and many others who uh, teach uh, have their own schools, basically, and they're uh, very well. Um, uh, I mean, it's just uh, class A schools, and God willing, we look for we look forward to more of these schools. Um, that's why, in the end, uh, it just takes time. It takes time, and it takes really studying it. Um, mm -hmm. uh, recordings. I also saw that you know. Uh, people asking for recordings. God willing, that's our next big project. Our first project that we've been working on is making sure we're providing new music, either editing old music or composing new music. We have been uploading um, uh, uh, recordings. And actually, this Vox Asticon, this glory, is actually on the liturgical guide. Yeah, so I was going to show that. When we start again, I'm going to go to the website. And I'm going to show you how to find it, uh, the recording. There is a there is a recording that you can just like listen to even if you don't you know read the music, um, but hopefully the sky you know in Byzantine the sky is the limit, uh, like in any other music like in any field you know you think you would have a PhD in, in math there's always something you're gonna learn about it uh, even doctors you know ten years in school they still have to go back every couple of years or whatever so to like learn and see what time you know uh, refresh their memory and learn the new stuff. Um, and the same thing with Byzantine. Uh, there's so much in Byzantine. And that's the goal, like, to get people to, like, you know, learn about these things. Rita, how's it going? Allah ma'ake, Abuna. Alhamdulillah, kifak. 
Thank God. Thank God. How's your thank family doing? How's everybody? Alhamdulillah. Everybody is good. Everybody Deacon is good. George thank God. Everybody. Every, Deacon George is good. We're, we're waiting now for my okay. sister and her family. Mm -hmm. They are immigrating after Bravo. 14 years Bravo. of waiting. Bravo. Yeah. So Bravo. hopefully he's a, uh, my brother-in-law is a, uh, the priest of uh, St. George in Baghdad. Bravo. Yeah, Father Yonan. So we'll see. God willing. Inshallah, inshallah. Inshallah, Ya Rab, inshallah. I'm gonna look into that school. Yeah, there we, there are you know especially like Trisayo and uh, yeah. Cozelius, and there are other ones. But you know, um, Saint um, Saint uh, or Trisayo school is actually, you know, three teachers, and of course Amy, one of our best. Uh, teachers here also she's been teaching uh, byzantine notations too uh, for uh -huh. many years and i also really um ask you to like you know if you guys can also attend dr jessica's um, class on those what's called the uh the thores, those uh, modulations yeah but she's doing it in uh, western notation right or no no well she's no. gonna give you you know, she might, well, God bless her, she knows both very, very well. Oh, good. So uh, she's going to, you know, in the end, it's, she'll have to, I mean, I do have the materials that she had just to you know, go through. But the point is, she has to, most likely, she definitely is starting with yeah. the presentation. Because you know what, what happened, the, Abuna, with me? So when I started, I, I was like lost. Because when I started in Tripoli, mm -hmm. it was like the beginning that I cut all the tones and uh, mm -hmm. and I was progressing very well but when I immigrated here everything wasn't in you know in western and I lost my like I lost all all the things that I learned in Byzantine I was like I had to to learn the new way of chanting because everything was in western notation available in our church you know exactly. well there's so, never too late no it's Almost never I'm just done with my school like it's just one month and i'm gonna be done and i said i'm gonna seriously like do the byzantine uh, i want to mm -hmm. catch up with it sure. yeah sure. yeah so god willing inshallah and that's why you know thank god you know what we have now we did not have 10 years ago or 15 years ago or 20 years ago yeah and god willing too many more you know at least yeah our part in the department we're trying my to get, you know. my nephew um andy is uh because he's studying in bellament huh engineering yeah but um he's now and he took the classes i don't know in tripoli or with beirut mm. but uh, he's doing the byzantine music and like i go to him on facetime and i ask him all this stuff so i'm hoping when he comes here we can chant together sure beautiful yeah um, i i always email him um, the english uh, you know texts of uh, shadi and i go like do this and read this. Yeah, I should have reminded you guys that this is still being recorded. Oh, that's oh. fine. <laughs> okay. Sorry, hi, Chris. Oh, <laughs> but I get so excited about Byzantine. I feel like it's like something in my blood. So, sure. Oh, man. Yeah. So, you thank God for everything. Me too. I understand that excitement. Hey. <laughs> yeah. But God willing, it's going to be, hi, how are you? Doing okay. Good. It's a little California right now, and it's it's not as muggy as the East Coast, but it's muggier than we would like it to be. Mm. In San Diego? Yes, in San Diego. Really? Oh. I think we have a sunny yeah. day here, and it's cooling down in uh, Central Valley, California. Oh. The world What's is <laughs> We, we have to do a Buna concert in all these Byzantine, beautiful Byzantine. Uh... Uh, you know, I'll tell you, well, in, I don't want to, God willing. God we, willing, we had something Inshallah. planned. We actually, we just put something um, right before, end of 2019, beginning of 2020, actually. We, um, we were putting something actually like serious, something serious, like, a, you know, a couple hour thing. And. I got uh, some funds and uh, and literally like okay we were like something towards September of last year like we will do something big like 40 50 chanters you know a choir of 40 50 people I had the list in my mind like started putting like okay who are we going to invite and what are we going to do and then COVID hit and then I know so, well 
God willing, Bravo. one day. I would like to participate, even though I don't know, but I will like do, mm. like I'm trying to learn, like I'm not gonna be a master. $200, you know, participation fee, basically. Okay. And, uh, I'm just, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's fine. I'll support. <laughs> I'll support financially but, and but God with my we, voice. We do need something like this. Yes, we need, we need concerts and all these beautiful hymns. Well, in the process of working up a piece for a concert also is an opportunity to really get it to a next level in a way that sometimes we don't always do for services. Mm. Although, I mean, I, in many ways we should, but, oh, sure. but it's a really good opportunity to get something nicely polished and to expand yeah. our sure. take on a piece that might be a bit more challenging than what we would do for a typical service. You know, sure. That's like, nice, yeah. I mean, in the end, yes, when we're in church, we're praying, we do want to still our best, but like if somebody like kind of took a breath the wrong place or like when everybody took a breath you know somebody went like oh you know it's okay but in concert they're just like just focus you know everybody yeah. you know and it's a good opportunity to. and to it's a way it. a way for us also to learn all these hymns maybe we don't use yeah. them for uh, like uh, as a choir in our churches is but it's a way to learn them also in a right way yeah, when I look, and before we start, because we have a couple of minutes, but also concerts are like the best, one of the best um, uh, things about concerts is teach, teaches you how to control your voice. Yeah. Uh, control your voice and be, in a way, not limited, like a better word, but like, not feel like the spirit will move me whatever I want and I'm just, doing. so you're basically kind of like knowing that you're singing as a choir Everybody, you're going to try to make sure that everybody like 100% together, not like, you know, we're going to, I'm going to embellish things the way I want, although somebody else is, you know, the conductor might want it something different. So it teaches you how to like be, um, um, what's the word, like a, a content maybe with what you have, not like always like, you know, and also you learn how to blend in, you learn how to you know, now I have to control my voice more because I, there's no point because I have a, a, a louder voice. Well, I want to I want to make sure that everybody hears my loud voice. So I'm going to overpower Ruth or, you know, Jenny or Shadi or, you know, so it teaches you. And that's the beauty. And that's why a lot of the, con the concerts you hear of like major, you know, major chanters like God rest his soul, Sol Licorgos Angelopoulos, like who had like a choir of like 50 people or 100 people singing. It is very hard to know who's singing because all the hundred are like basically the sound of one person almost. And they don't sing things like complicated. And that's the beauty of concerts. It's not like, well, I'm going to show you how complicated, you know, how I can chant complicated things is more of like, I'm going to show you how can we, we can chant in unison as one voice, or even if it's just like an apolitikion of, I don't know, apolitikion of dormition. And that's the beauty of, uh, but when it comes to concerts, like people always say, oh, we'll practice for the, con like, no, you know, technically when you come to the concert or even to rehearse for the concert, that you have things already like, like embedded in your head mm -hmm. and you're just like singing, just like looking at the text, just because as a reference, you know, a lot of times in, I've, I made that mistake multiple times where if I get invited to, um, uh, to chant or record things and it's just like I barely read the text maybe once or twice before and just like okay I'm I know I can do 95 percent of it on the spot like right but it just that's not like you need to be very comfortable with it you know when it comes to the concert just like comfortable to like just like chant it naturally and just like not like constrained and like you're so familiar with it not just like you're you know your your head and your eyes stuck in the book. Anyway, it's 2.46. Okay, thank you. Ahla. Uh, welcome back, everyone. This is the second part. Now we're going to continue on with uh, doing, looking at the Doxasticon, the glory um, at O Lord, I Have Cried. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm going to show something, one thing first, Father John. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Here we go. All right. Um, to continue on, now we've done tone. We did the beginning. You know this is in all eight tones. We did the beginning tone one, tone five, and then we did tone two and, and uh, tone six. So now we're going to get into the last part of tone three, uh, tone seven, and tone four, and tone eight, and then back to tone one. 
But first, I don't remember. I was trying to find it. Could one of the somebody asked about uh, recording for this particular uh, music? So if you go to our our sacred music library, antiochian.org/music/library. Um, <clears throat> When you come down to the library, there's a few ways you could find it, but since you know it's in Dormition, you could hit the D. It brings you down to the Ds. Here's a group heading. You see the group of files. Anytime you see a group of files instead of a single file, you've got a single file of music here. But if it says group of files, that means you click this part and it brings down all of the different uh, selections that are in this particular uh, grouping and this is for the Dormition and lo and behold there's the glory you can click on that and it'll bring up the music this is what we're chanting um, and usually what we try to do and I, <laughs> I guess I didn't do it on this one we put at the top there that the Byzantine chant starts on whatever page but it's not too many pages here you see the Byzantine following it this is what we're doing today now if you also then look this is how where you click on for the um, the actual PDF file, but you also see listen. You could click on that. And you'll... Oh, no, no. Except I didn't share my sound. Just hold on. We can hear it. You can. I was hearing it. Let me do it better here. Share sound. Okay, so now. Oh, no, no. go on for uh, seven and a half minutes there so uh, you can see um, how to find things so this is in our library we do have the recording of it with Father John uh, recording Shaddy's music so anytime you might see also make sure you look at the bottom since we're here make sure you look at the bottom uh, part of each piece of music you may have seen well I already I already downloaded that uh, like a year ago well, sometimes we find mistakes and we update it. So we put a little revision and when the date was that it was last updated. Uh, so you can see if you have the latest edition of something. Okay. Um, all right. So now we're back. Go ahead, Father John. Thank you. Welcome back. <laughs> now we finished the tone six. Uh, we have the next part, which is, oh, let me go. Share screen. Share. Now we finished the plagal second or the tone six part. Um, we now go to the second, the, the following part, which is in third mode. But like, let's see this transition from tone six to tone three. So we had this is the second part of the tone six one, the plagal second part. So mm, behold the queen of all. The the divine maiden has come. So in this, the bass note of tone six, stick it out, that's the paw, that's the D. But then what do I see here? I see something even new. I see this symbol like this. I'm just going to try to write it like this, like this, like this. This symbol is a Torah, is a Torah of, in the diatonic scale of Ni. So now, so the Divine Maiden, um, where's the Divine Maiden? Radhi, Kedhi, Kedhi, Radhi, Radhi, Ravu, Pavu, Papa. But now, what do I consider it? I have to consider it Ni of tone, the diatonic. So now, and then I have this, keep that melody in, in your head. And now I have this symbol. I have this, like this, and next to it, this, and then this. In Byzantine, that equals 
four steps up plus one. So you're going to jump four and then one. So the last note we said, that's a knee, right? Knee plus four. Right? And then plus one. So this one here starts. Okay? Because and it's now it's I'm in the uh, in the uh, n harmonic scale. Why? Because I have this so many notes. That's why very important. If you can join Dr. Jessica's uh, uh, class, do join it. And if you can pull out the class from last year, I think we have them posted. Um, take advantage of that, and you know so you can learn all of these uh, thores, all these modulations. So first. Like I said, the last note here was ni or pa initially that became now ni. And then we're going up four mm -hmm. steps and then one. So ni pa vogadi, zi ke zi ra vogadi, zi ke ke. And the, the reason this thing here that you see, this is, if I can sing, consider that's the, the thora of the inharmonic scale. It comes usually on ga, always comes on ga and makes the vu sharp. Does that make sense? So this symbol, 99% of the time, we have one small exception. We don't need to go through it now. But in general, this symbol like this that you see it here always comes on a ga. So to make the vu sharp. And what does that mean to make the vu sharp? In Western, it will be actually natural because the vu the way we sing it in the diatonic scale is a bit flatter. The natural vu in the diatonic scale is a little bit flatter than a, an E in the C major scale. Now let Chris after talk about these things, but this is this is how much I know about this. Um, the point is now this become this is now a tone three uh, 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 traditional line. So but look at the key. The key has on top of this, this. What is that? This is actually the thorah vu. Because if it was pa before, right? Like uh, yeah, but like, uh, oh, it's if it's a low V. Anyway, um, why the key is like this? We don't have, we're not, we're not familiar with a key like this in any of the scales. But this is a combination then of two because of the transposition. If we go up uh, lower, the initial note at the end of the day, it's the low V, right? Because everything was transposed in the beginning for, you know, uh, the four steps. Um, down, right? When we trans from the first time here, we transport uh, transposed everything four down. Now we have so this one. Although when I do parallel, it's pa, but it's actually pa ni zo ke vi, like four down. So that's initially a v. And when I'm going up, if I consider this is without the thora, without so without this thora, without this one. And without this, if I didn't have these, that would have been the, and then we have to go up four steps. So pa vu, pa ni, zo ni, zo ni, pa, pa vu, vu. So technically, I should have a vu, which looks like this. Right? That's the, 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 the martyria vu in the diatonic scale. But the new one, the new note is when I consider, like the way we've done it, and K, symbol of K in the inharmonic and the diatonic is like this. So what did we do? We always take the upper part of the original pitch, which is the VU, and then in the lower part of the new the pitch the new pitch with all the uh, uh, um, with all the modulations and that's why we have this key here 
like this. Okay, that's this key on its own. Just, it just it's a combination because of the transposition in different scale. Uh, at least here, almost. I mean, it's kind of the same scale, but here the transposition of the keys, and that's why we have this mix of um, martyrias into one. So. But how do you, it's, it sounds like tone three? It is tone three in there. But um, uh, Shadi, you want to sing it or any uh, any questions or? Uh, le, le. Up the gates and receive super earthly wise the mother of everlasting. This. Oh, let me stop and. Uh, okay, so I am going to repeat just a few things. I know most of you are the same. I think we may have gained a few people. Um, so just to finish up here. Now we finished the last part on a tone six, um, and as he was saying, now in the western, we actually wrote it ending on the on the low G. Uh, because that's the that's where the pitch was from how we started. We didn't want to change pitches, but you're thinking because it's transposed, you're thinking as if it were a tone six transposed up, but we're transposing it down. Um, so just to end up here, the divine maiden has come. It's more familiar in a tone six written like that, but because of where we pitched it from before, we're, we're on, a, on a fifth down. The divine maiden, on the B, on the D, maiden, maiden has come as if we're on a low G. Okay, so now we don't want to change pitches. So what I was saying to you, to the new people who are here, when you see, when you're in a tone and you're seeing, um, well, it's in the beginning part of tone six, you see all these changes, the thora that change the pitch. We're not, it's changing the scale. You're not changing the pitch. We're staying on the same pitch, but you're going to think of it as if it were a new pitch. You're going to, instead of singing it, may I mean, like here on a C, you're going to think of it as if you're singing it a fifth up on a G, because that's how it typically would look in a tone six. Um, but we are still keeping it on the same pitch, the relative pitch of where we were at from the, from the beginning. So we're still writing it as if it were a C, but we're thinking of it as if that were a G, if that makes sense. So now we've ended... The second part on the low G here. Okay, so we're coming from a low G. We're not going to change pitch. Now, like he said, we're going up a fifth. So from a low G, you're going up a fifth. Now you're on a D, which is why we started this on a D. Okay, but because... Mm -hmm. Do I not have what you had? Uh, you... Put, put yours, put yours back up on the screen. No, you. I th no, you have the same thing. I'm, I'm looking. Okay, yeah. Put yours back up, please. 
Sure. Here you go. Right at the beginning of the third mode. Right there. Up a little on the Byzantine. Oh. Oh, you have the same. Yeah. Okay. You good? So it's basically, all right, let me go back then. I'll put mine back up here. I did that again. Okay. Mm, so from a low G to the D. Now, because this symbol here, not the double bar there that you see, just this symbol here tells you to go up a fifth, and then this symbol will tell you you're going to go from the fifth and then up a note uh, above that. Um, okay, so now we're on a D. Now the now you're changing here because of this symbol this whoops this is the 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 symbol then to tell you we're going how do you know on this particular byzantine that you're in now in a, in a third mode this thing that you just circulated that one there that's um yeah it's basically it's a, it's a it's a thora but it's not a thora it's more of like a, a sharp note like a right. sharp symbol but doesn't come on its it doesn't make this note that comes on it sharp. It actually comes on. It makes the note before it. So, but it's that's what identifies also the tone three. Uh, you only see it in tone three and tone seven technically. All right. It's, and now it's effectless. Pardon me. So, sorry, it's effectless until another thora comes and. Yeah. Okay. Change it. All right. So we went from the low G. Now you're up on the D. Now that's how you're going to continue singing it, but it's now the third mode because of that symbol up there. You're going to think of it as if it were on a G. Even though we're still keeping the same pitch of where we were writing it all along, we're not changing pitches. Every time we change, change uh, the transposition, we're not changing the pitch. We're only thinking of it as if it were change but we're keeping it on the same pitch so here going from the low g up a fifth we're now going to be on a d mm -hmm. lift up the gates okay but you're if you're thinking of it when you're reading the byzantine you're going to why we write it on a d in the western because that's where the pitch is. But when you're thinking of it in, in the third mode, you're gonna think of it as if it, we've transposed it down on the uh, fourth to the D, but you're gonna think of it as if it were on a G, because that's typically how you would see a tone three, okay? So even though we're singing it, and I don't know where this thing came from, okay. We're writing it on the D, but you're thinking of it as if you were singing it on the G because that's where the tone three would take you. Lift up the gates. It's the same thing as if you were singing it here. Lift up the gates. Okay, so the, the music that we, we give to you when it says that it's transposed down it means if you were typically going to sing it in a third mode, you would sing it up starting on the G. But because we're not changing pitches, we're not changing the notes here as we're writing it along through the whole piece. Um, that would be impossible. You're going back and forth, up and down. We're keeping it on the same pitch, but you're thinking of it as if it were in a different in, on a different note, only so we can think of it uh, in that particular tone so we can sing it according to the formula for that particular tone. Um, so then you've had, on the D, you would sing it, mm, lift up the gates and receive super super earthly wise the mother of everlasting light. So it's typically a tone three, but that's not how you would normally see a tone three written. 
This is how you would normally see something written in tone three. But because, like I said, I don't want to keep repeating it, but it's just to help. I had to keep telling myself over and over and I had to stop thinking of it um, as if I were on the D, thinking of it as if I were on a G, because that would help me to sing it better in a tone three, because that's how I knew tone three in Western, for me, Western. Um, so, but that's how we continue to write it as a pitch. Now we'll continue when we go to the third, when, uh, go to the uh, seventh mode. Father John will now continue. Um, if I can figure out how to get rid of my. Okay. All right, Father John. Are you there, Father John? Unmute yourself. I don't know why somehow I muted myself. Share screen. Okay. Can you hear me? And I guess you hear me and you can yes. see. Me. Yeah. All right. So after the tone three part, um, we go to tone seven. And the good thing about this two parts that they both follow the same scale. So technically there is nothing to put to switch or we don't need what's called the Thora, uh, or you know the corruption, or like corrupt one scale to another. They just follow the same scale. The difference between that FYI on the side, on the side. What is the difference between tone three and seven? How do you, can you differentiate between tone three and tone seven? And the best way to uh, there are two things that you differentiate between those two tones, because basically both of them has have the ga or the F as the bass note. But two things help you to distinguish between both. First, the dominant pitches in tone three, although the bass note is, is ga or F, the dominant pitches are A and D, pa and K. In tone seven, in varis, in tone seven, the, the, the uh, bass note is ga, is F, but the dominant pitch is what, are what? Ni and zo and the. So, that's one that tells you the difference. And the second difference between them, each tone has its own melodic formula, specific melodic formula. Okay. So they come from the same, they're the same, uh, they come from the same scale and they have the same bass note, but the dominant notes are different. So -da -la -la, -da 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 that's a tone, a tone three melody because -da 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 but like in tone seven, there's no K. The melody never like revolves around the K, around the A. So the when we're chanting tone seven is more of like la 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 ta ra ta ta. Oh, I'm sorry, I kept it on tone three. Ta ra 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 we don't have this revolving around the A or around the K in tone seven. So tone three, uh, it ends here. We see it, it ends on a pa, right? That's the pa, right? How it would have typically looked in tone three. And then we're going up two steps. Pavura ra ra zo ke di ke ra di ra di ra di ke zo ke di di ra. Those are like typical melody of tone seven melodies of tone seven in the uh, sticky rhotic style. Ta ra 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 ra. And, but then what do we see here? We see this kind of a hook like this, like this, like this. It is, it just, it's not a, uh, um, um, a phthora, phthora, but this note is basically the same concept as this note right here. In this one, it's, I said it comes on an F to make the E sharp. Okay, this one comes on an F to make the E sharp, or it comes on a Ga to make the Vu sharp. 
this one, this hook, usually comes on a zoo to make the zoo flat and all zoos flat. Makes all the bees flat, regardless if you're going up, down, left, right, whatever it is, north, south, west, east, all the zoos will be flat unless there's another note, another thora or something put up. Uh, so and this one is a basically a very basic tone seven, sticky erotic melody here. The key is a bit different, of course. Um, it's because, like I said before, it's because we have a, uh, a mix of uh, two notes or two pitches. If you notice, what is it? Uh, oh, sorry. What is this key here? This is, the, this is the low G, right? A. What is it? Low A. Oh, I'm sorry, low A. Um, that's a low A. And then, uh, so low A, and then we're going up to, so that's a C, right? So, originally, this is a pa. Originally, that's a pa, but with the new here, with the new uh, um, uh, scale, with with all the changes, basically based on uh, based on this. So that's. So okay, so we're taking on top the top part always the original pitch. So that's the original pitch. That's the upper part of it. And and the lower part, if you see those two dots, and then looks like an R, that's. Oh, I, we don't need this. And then, so the the part. So we want the low. So the the we want the lower part. So boom, boom, boom. Sorry. The. And that's why this key looks like this. We have the combination of the original melody, uh, original pitch with the new pitch because of the transposition. Shadi, you want to sing it? Or through her head salvation come to the whole human And she is the one on whom it is impossible to guess, and whom we can never honor. So if you heard it just like typical this one has typical tone seven uh, um, melodic formula <clears throat> which in a way if you had to chant something from text and it has it it says in tone seven try to use those melodies that you've heard but the point is the, the bigger the the struggle is, you know, those melodies not just like randomly put here. Those melodies, this let's say this melody for through her salvation, come. It's because this melody fit the accentation of the text. <clears throat> for through her has salvation come. So we notice that this melody will have the third syllable uh, uh, accented. And this here on her, salvation is accented, uh, salve, ve is ac accented, and come is accented. And that's why the usage or the need to use this melody for this type of this uh, uh, type of word order. Chris? So there are questions are coming in before I start on, um, uh, if you want to look at that, Father John. Um, Vu natural, you're singing if you're in tone seven, I think they're asking, grave mode. 
Vu natural, that is a normal diatonic vu, not sharp with the inharmonic marker. Yes. Yes, uh, Xenia, yes. So always, you know, keep in mind that in, in Western is a bit different than Byzantine. Uh, in the Western, in the Byzantine scale, ni pa vu gazi kezoni, the diatonic, we don't have just full steps and half steps. We have those like two third and a little bit more than a step. So um, when we say a, a, a natural vu, it is not a natural E in a C major scale. It's actually, it's a bit, uh, a, a bit lower. So in, in Byzantine, pa to vu is 10 microtones. If we're considering that a full step is 12 microtones. So in Western, D to E, it's a full step. And if we're going to give it a number, it's 12 microtones. But in Byzantine, it's not 12, it's actually 10. So it's a little bit flatter. So when I, when I say, oh, it's a sharp E, then it's like the natural Western E. So nat a sharp V is a natural E in C major scale, scale without the Kim, you know. Okay. All right, so we finished in tone three here on the low A. So we're thinking of it, I know sometimes if you're thinking of it as a normal tone three, you would have ended on a D, but here the pitch wise is where it's written is on a low A. So now we come up here, which says go up two notes. So we're gonna go from the low A up to the uh, middle C, all right? And this is, uh, now we're gonna think of it as if tone seven, but we're writing it Instead of like from an F to a B flat, we're writing it on a C to an F. It's the same tone seven scale, except you're taking it and moving it down a fourth uh, because that's where we've pitched, like I said, all the other things coming through. We're keeping on the same pitch that we end on from the previous one. We're not changing the pitch, but we're changing the scale on where you go from that pitch. So now you ended it and we're coming up a fourth to on a G now coming up to a C mm, four through her now why we've circled some of these because in the in the Byzantine you heard Shaddy do a lot of that um, embellishments and and according to the formula you can you have within that formula you have a freedom to uh, move a lot around a little bit for through her hath salvation come to the whole human race. And she is the one on whom it is impossible to gaze. Okay, so we're going to come and ending it um, on and whom we can ever honor, honor sufficiently. Now we're ending it on the C. But you might be thinking, well, this is tone seven. I'm, why would I be ending it on, on C? Well, again, we're keeping it in the same pitch. Now, if you were to think of it as if you were in a tone uh, seven, this is how it would look. But you're singing it as a, on the same pitch, only it looks, it's written differently. But it's the same thing as what I had up above. For through her hath salvation come. This looks more familiar to us, how we normally or typically would write a tone seven. And again, ending it on the F, which is the tonic and the E so note for the tone seven. So <clears throat> throughout this whole thing, anytime you see in Byzantine, um, you're starting on one pitch on a note and then they transpose, you're not gonna change the pitch. You're only gonna think about how you're gonna change and transpose and staying on the same pitch Instead of it being one note, you're going to think of it as the other note going to a, whatever a tone or scale that it's changing to. That's how. That's what all of this means. And that's what we've tried to get across to you and why you might see when we write this um, in our music, we're putting the tone here and we put the tra 
we put the transposed down a fifth so you will understand, oh, this is tone seven, he's writing it on a C. Okay, transpose down a fourth. Well, it should be on F, but he's writing it on C. Okay, so basically, um, I hope that helps with tone seven. And now we'll continue with the last, or we got the last two parts here, uh, tone four and tone eight, coming off of tone seven. <laughs> Yes, I mean, in the end, I just uh, I should have mentioned that in the beginning too. Um, it will will help very much, uh, you know, learning this thing. Not just learn the theory about it, because it's in the end of the day, you'll get the theory. And couple, you know, you just put it together. You just you know read a little bit more about the Thores and what they do, and like all oh, you know, yeah, number wise, this one is this, this one is like you know, flatter, sharp, and all this. But what really, really, really help at the end of the day also. It's like whenever you learn a language, you can learn the grammar and you can be so good in grammar, but like you cannot speak it very well. Because the best way at the end of the day, as much as you definitely need the grammar as a foundation, you need to listen and practice it more. So the point is, listen as much as you can to like chant um, recordings. What I suggest, even in the end of the day, even if it's not in English, even if you listen to Arabic or you know Byzantine chant in Arabic or Byzantine chant in Greek, or in Arabic or in English, but at least like more specific, like more like choirs that have been established lately, like, you know, um, choirs, not just like a recording from like 30, 40 years from Western notation. You want the people like whoever you're listening to using still Byzantine notation um, and chanting from Byzantine notation. So you get like accustomed and you can be like comfortable, you know, recognizing this melody. So when if it's like something in tone three, you know, at the end of the day, in tone three, you're gonna have this melody. Ta -da 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 -ra 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 I don't need actually to, I don't need the music, the ending of this music, because I'm so comfortable knowing that this melody, that's how it goes. It's basically like in words. When if I say the word, if I start saying the word resurrect. I mean, if somebody knows English very well, knows in the end of the day, it has to be either resurrection or resurrected, right? Depending on where it is in the sentence. And the same thing with the melodies. Those melodies, they're just not like randomly put together. So anytime I hear la, 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 I know now, like, I don't need the rest of those notations because I know what, how it's going to be. La, 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 la. And just like when we read any text and actually we're not reading syllable by syllable, we're reading actually, you know, the first syllable or two, and we know the rest of it because we're so familiar with that language. Phrase by phrase. Phrase by, exactly. And that's the same thing in Byzantine. So when you familiar, familiarize yourself with those melodies, it helps tremendously learning those, you know, those hymns like this together. Anyway, so after tone seven, um, and whom we can never honor sufficiently. That's an F, although written on the C, but that's an F. And then whatever we have next, what do we have next in the fourth mode part? And then telling us now to go up one step. What's happening on what's happening on this the we have this symbol a round thing and like this coming down like this part right here the but this is this round thing with a line like this it's the Torah of pa in the diatonic scale so although it's the now I have to consider it pa ni pa pa vuradi ravu pa ni pa so and guess what? What is this key? Aha! <laughs> What is this key? That's actually the key of pa in the diatonic scale. There's no confusion. There's no like mix or anything. So now by switching here, all these switches now we're back to where 
We're back to <laughs> bingo. This key, the main key. Hey. <laughs> la, 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 la. <laughs> That's the tone four one. Uh, uh, Shadi, you want to sing it, please? For the honor through which she became sublime, transcended, all understanding. Yeah, so, <clears throat> okay. Um, I'll stop playing. I'm learning not to click so fast now until you get out. <laughs> All right, so finally, finally we get back to the normal, natural, everything that I remember from before. <laughs> no transpositions. Yes, you don't have to think of it as if it were something else. Now it is what it is. Um, so we're ending as we wrote it even though it was a tone seven where we ended it on the c okay even though we're thinking of it almost like it was an f on the tone seven but we wrote it out as a c ending it there now this tells us to go up one note so now we're on a d okay and as he said this symbol now tells us that that's the symbol for pa in diatonic so now I'm thinking I'm on D. It's telling me I'm on D on the PA. Okay, now I'm back to normal. Um, but I'm thinking now it's, it's a diatonic and it's going to be the fourth mode. And this was all also hard for me to um, think because I, when I first learned all of this, yes, the endings for tone four, sometimes you would come down to the PA, but to me, uh, the main note was vu on E because that you you worked around E on tone four, um, <clears throat> but sometimes you ended on on tone on on the on the D. And just incidentally, when you if you look at some of the Vesper music and music that Kazan wrote for the Vespers and I think even Matins, it was typical that, uh, unbeknownst to us, when I first learned this. Shaddy and Father John, yes. You would come down at the end of a phrase to the pa, but you would we automatically would go back up to the vu. We didn't ever keep it on the pa. You it's not right to go up to the vu. Da, 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 da. You would always do that. And once I learned that that wasn't correct, that used to drive me crazy. <laughs> And I think we probably did that because when we learned tone four, we naturally thought of as a, on a vu. And that was where you probably would start, you ended, but no, some of them end them on the pa. And you would keep it on the pa. And that's what's confusing too. And people are sometimes giving you uh, isone and they don't know any better. They keep the, the isone on a pa. And now you're moving into the next formula and you should be on a vu, isone, and they keep it on a pa. It's very confusing and you're trying to tell them while you're chanting and just stop, just don't even do it then. All right, so we've come from the C, we go up one to the D. Now we're in diatonic and it's telling us we're on a, on a D, on a PA, so that's good. So now we can write it as natural, as normal. There's no transposition and again, you don't see anything that tells you now it's transposed. Not transposed, we're all normal. Mm, for the, the honor through which she became sublime transcendeth all understanding. Okay, so you notice we don't have any as if it were typically written on this one <laughs> because we're back to the normal. Yes. Okay. Go ahead, Father John. 
I think it's a good exercise uh, for like each, especially if you know a West a Byzantine notation uh, very well. Uh, just do the math and like work out work out all these like you know pitches and how many up and down and how we go back actually how we went back to the actually to the same on the same pitch that you started with. I think it's a good challenge and a good exercise. You know that's that's true. It's all mathematical and Shadi did it. <laughs> I mean, how you, you come from one spot, you start in all this transposition and you add, you end up back in the normal. Mathematically, you just come right back there. So after the fourth tone, we have the tone eight one, but also because both uh, tone four a sticky erotic and tone eight sticky erotic, they follow the same scale. So we don't have any, any changes. We don't have any uh, um, uh, modulations, any flores, any symbols that it's going to take us. We need to take, take us from one scale to another or to transpose basically. In this one, there's no changing of scales, but also no transposition, just to keep the same natural things that we already started on and right from the beginning. Although it might sound now a little bit high just because we changed the pitch, you know, we were not consistent of keeping the same pitch just because we're stopping talking and stuff. Share, so, share your screen. Oh yeah, duh, right? Thank you. You know, that's why when I told you his family, that these people, like they always have our back. You know, we have each other's backs. God bless you guys. Yeah, uh, so, hey. uh, <laughs> so uh, oh, this is just bad. Um, like, this tone eight one, it's literally a typical melody is nothing, you know, typical melody of tone eight. Uh, tone eight, stick it out. Um, oh, well, here's the thing. It ends on the pa here, right? It ends on the pa, 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 But now in tone eight, ke, di, ra, vo, pa, ke, di, ra, vo, pa, ni, pa, vo, ra, di, ke, di, ra, vo, pa, ni, ke, di, ra, vo, pa, vo, ra, di, ra, di, di, ra, vo, ra, di, ke, di, ra, ra, vo, and we have, I mean, I'll do the first part, I mean, both parts uh, together. Mm -hmm. Oh. Forgive me. Yes, I'm doing because I'm trying to read it from the Western, which I should know better. I'm not that good at it. Uh, I'm, I'll repeat it from that we may preserve. If you notice, this is a sharp note that just applies to the note that comes on it. And here to make the pa sharp. So See how sharp? And what happened here? This, this thing like this, like a sleeping S with this circle here, this is a Torah of Pa in the heart chromatic. There is this modulation here for this uh, hostile. You know, it's a text painting thing. For the word hostile, there is a switch to heart chromatic scale. And then with this one, this is a Torah of Ni in the diatonic. So now back to regular diatonic tone eight. Shadi, you want to change them? Right there. 
Ur for Ur. Well, yeah, it's a bit, a bit high. Yeah, though you tenors are all. Ur for Ur. It's still too high. Is that the one you started on? Got a nipa bugadi. Wor for on the fight. Everlasting with thy life bearing son intercede with him on Scroll up, Father John. Sorry, come John. in. How are you? Here we go. That he may preserve and save thy new people from every hostile. Soul. For we have taken thee unto us as our helper. Okay. Chris, anything you want to talk about? Yes. Uh, as we say in Arabic, Tuddal. 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 Please. Okay. Um, so oh, we. Let me uh, stop sharing. We ended um, fourth mode on the PA. Now we're going into the next section. Oh, that was... oh I'm sorry. Wrong part. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Fourth, plagal fourth. Okay. So now we're going into the next section. We go up here a fifth, but we're still, we're not transposed. So we're going up from the pa, from the D, we go up a fifth. Now we're on A, which is correct. We're, there's no transpositions. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, O oh, undefiled. So we're, we're singing it as natural. Um, so we're in a tone eight. Plagal of fourth, uh, no transpositions, so it should be fairly similar. We don't have to think of it as if it were something else. We're in the regular pitches and regular notes. Theotokos, <clears throat> everlasting with thy life bearing son. So just like Father John mentioned before, you know you're knowing it. You you know you're in a tone eight. You don't even need really. And sometimes I don't even look at the notes when I'm singing this from the Byzantine because I know how it's going to end. You already know those formula, um, and you just make sure at the end I kind of glance ahead to see that it does end on the knee on the C, so that you know you're you're in the right formula. Intercede with him unceasingly. Now, he didn't say anything about this, but this is a typical that he's been using a little bit more, I've noticed, in some of his um, compositions, Shaddy. He's been using this type of a phrase, um, which is really nice. Da, 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 da. <clears throat> and it's really nice. I liked how... Uh, how it comes out. Now you're ending here, then on your on the G, and you're continuing on uh, that. You go down two, so we're still on the E, still natural, still everything is the same. 
that he may preserve and save thy new people. So here in the diatonic, right, you're, he put the actual sharp in there, like Father John mentioned, he put that sharp in there. And sometimes I've thought, you know, because people might look at that and not see anything different, why is he sharpening that? Uh, sometimes I've actually put uh, a little sharp thing here up above, let, like there you do, you have in the, in the Byzantine. Sometimes I'll put that there in the Western, although it's not necessary. All I have to do is put it here. And you would assume that there was something different in the Byzantine. That's why it was that way. New people from every now, from every here. Now you get that for hard chromatic, which is typically like how we sing the stick it out of tone six, the hard chromatic. So now it's the symbol for pa. And where am I actually at? Well, I'm actually ending here on C, so you're going up a note, so it is pa. So this is the easier kind of change of key where you're not transposing, you're simply following the same scale, you're on the same pitch, the same notes, except now you're, you're thinking instead of diatonic tonate, now you're thinking a hard chromatic from that pa, from that D, a hard chromatic scale. Okay, so that's why I put this hard chromatic. You notice there's no transpositions here. I don't write any transposed. It's just simply the same pitch, different scale, same note. From every hostile assault. And now because we end the bracket right here, we end it here. <clears throat> Now, that tells me now I'm back into the, the diatonic scale, tone 8, back to that. But still on the same note, no transposition. Some assault, for we have taken thee unto us as our helper. Okay, I just noticed we have only a few minutes here. Father John, oops, go ahead. Share your last scale for the last part of tone one. Mm, and then, of course, um, oh, I, I, I went, okay, here we go. Then we go back to tone one. We, it, it ended on, you know, on the C, as we see it here, helper. Uh, and now we're back to tone one. Uh, Therefore, do we magnify thee with voices of joy unto all ages with an ending, but it's just a typical tone one melodies uh, in, you know, uh, stick erotic style. In Byzantine uh, chant, yes, you you might have multiple tones in one, you know, in one hymn, but I am not familiar with any, especially in the stick erotic style, that a, a hymn ends on a different tone that it was, it was intended in the beginning, that what is it said. So I'm not familiar, or I don't think there is any a, a hymn that ends here, let's say, if it says in the beginning it's in tone one and adds in tone five or tone four or tone six or tone two. And that's why it always will end uh, with the tone that it was intended in the beginning uh, for. So, forgive me, ni. Pani pavu radi ravu pavu vu raga di ke zo ke di ravu ravu ra vu radi pavu raga di di raga vu pavu pa pani pavu pa just a typical tone one um, melody. Shadi, have a single. Wherefore do we magnify thee with voices of joy unto all ages? 
Chang. Okay, so in Western, there wouldn't be any difference. It's uh, we're still in a, and correct me, uh, gentlemen, um, you don't need any thought up here nope. on your um, at the beginning part because you're still diatonic. You're still diatonic, and you right. don't you don't need to transpose anything as a composer. Like just follow the pitches as they were, and it uh, you realize that it's in the tone one, and you end it on the pop. Mm -hmm. It just now it's more like tone one, and what how is it different tone eight from tone one? Is the bass note and those melodies. So uh, basically, in tone eight, you don't see the sequence of notes like this. It's just this sequence. Uh, sorry, from here. This sequence of those notes like this. You don't see that sequence of notes in tone eight. You only see it in tone one. And that's what it, another indication why it's in tone one. Um, uh, that concludes our session. I hope, you know, we did our best to like at least some kind of explain what's happening in this glory. Best thing is listen to recordings listen to other chant uh yes work out the theories like also learn the theories about each tone it's very important to know you need uh, you know you need this the the foundation the grammar of that music of that language and also you need the practical the practice listen be open to it takes time it took us years to, till till today we learn we you know we get to learn we need to learn and listen and you know all of this we never stop the, the day we stop we're gonna start you know um, going down on this. Uh, basically, there's no limit. We always keep learning this thing. Um, uh, that's all I, I don't want to like. Just so I want to thank you all for being here. And just on a personal note, I would encourage you all. I know this was a very difficult hymn. Um, mm -hmm. Not everything that we sing or, or write uh, that he writes is, is this difficult um, with transpositions and back and forth. So my, my suggestion to you all is what I told myself, don't give up. Don't stop. I'm telling you, honestly, I don't know if Father John or Shaddy ever know, knew this, but <laughs> there were many times that I was doing all of this and I, okay, I can't do this anymore. Forget it. I, you know, find somebody else. I can't do it. I, I, I don't understand. I don't get it. I, forget it. I don't want to do it. No, please don't give up. I didn't give up. They were very encouraging to me. And I kept at it. I kept trying to learn over and over. And I'm sure Jessica will tell you that, Father John and Shetty, and anybody who does this Byzantine will tell you it takes a long time, a lot of study, and a lot of effort. Uh, we fall, we get up. That's the way it is. And we continue to go on. And it's all for the glory of God. We do it all for his glory, not just to sing the right notes and the pitches. That's We need to keep things decently and in, in order, as St. Paul tells us. But we're doing it all for the glory of God. Remember that. We're praying these hymns. We're not just singing. Mm -hmm. We're praying them. And that's what's important. So we bring honor to him. We build up the body of Christ. We're spiritually uplifted for his glory until we attain to that level with the angels and we can sing with them in the kingdom forever. So thank you all for being here. God bless you all. You have uh, Now we have 10 minutes. The next session with Father Michael Nasser starts at 4 o'clock. Thank you. Bye now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you both. You're welcome. <laughs>